reading your piece in The Spectator this week, Douglas, about, you know, the young of particularly this country, but of many other countries who have sort of joined in with this mass um, kind of hatred of Israel. Um, there's more Palestinian That's marches right. being made through the streets of Britain over the course of this weekend. They're now saying, oh, well, this is not a ceasefire, so we're still going to march until we get a ceasefire. You've got some interesting things to say about that. Yeah. Look, I mean, these people marched uh, from the day after the Hamas atrocities of October the 7th. They literally marched before Israel had done anything mm. in retaliation for the murder of 1,400 Israelis and the abduction of 240 civilians and the stealing of them into Gaza in God knows what conditions. So these people who are marching on our streets in London and around the UK uh, were doing this from the start. They don't actually care about the Palestinians. I'm very persuaded by this. I've covered a lot of conflicts, including in this region. You know, uh, there were no marches when Bashar al-Assad was massacring hundreds of thousands of Syrians. There were no marches of this size in the UK. There were no marches of this size in the UK when hundreds of thousands of Muslims were being killed in Yemen. These people, including the Muslims and including the doltish leftists and others who go along with this, they don't actually care about the Palestinians. What they hate is Israel defending itself. What they hate is the one Jewish state in the world defending its civilians. They believe that they don't have the right to do that. And if anyone thinks that if Israel somehow uh, um, opened the borders of Gaza, that, by the way, Egypt also closes, uh, that this would all be peaceful, just look at what happened when 4,000 people flooded through the Gaza into Israel last month. Mm. I've seen too many of the sights of what they did myself by now. They carried out atrocities of a kind that we haven't seen since the Second World War. We haven't seen atrocities like this since Nazi Germany. And these guys were so happy when they were doing it, as they were massacring. We have the tapes, we have the evidence, by the way. We've already got Holocaust denial in real time. Uh, we have the tapes of the people who were being killed. We have their iPhone footage. We have the attackers' videos. They were doing GoPro as they were going around house to house. We have the first responders' videos. We have bodies in the morgue not far up from me still being worked on by forensic pathologists to try and work out who, which sex these bodies even were, who these people were in life, whether they were male or female, young or old. Why? because the bodies were so badly decimated by Hamas that even now, seven weeks later, the identities of some of the victims are not known. Yeah. And how dreadful is it to look back on the day itself um, and go into Gaza and watch as you see people demonstrating, you know, cheering, shouting, you know, spitting on uh, the dead bodies of of some of the, uh, the victims as they were driven on the back of pickup trucks. Melanie Phillips wrote an interesting piece um, earlier this week, Douglas, and you probably saw it, in which she said, you know, the secret that dare not speak its name is that there's an awful lot more people in uh, Gaza and the West Bank who support Hamas than we know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, people talk about this sort of idea, and it's a, it's a, it's a nice fiction that the Gaza is sort of ruled by Hamas, who, of course, were voted in by the Gazans in 2006 and, of course, never held another election. It's true that Hamas in Gaza has, among other things, uh, tortured and killed their Fatah opponents and members of other Palestinian factions. Hamas has no particular love uh, for the Palestinians either. If it did, it wouldn't have taken all the millions and billions of dollars of international aid that British taxpayers, among other things, sent them and built tunnels underneath Gaza and then used it for their own wealth creation abroad and pumping it into foreign bank accounts. You know, happy us, the British taxpayer, where our dollars went when they went to Gaza. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, 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 it's astonishing to me to watch what is happening back home. And I tell you this, Mike, this is the one thought I've had most since this all started was, I'm pretty confident that, and having been in Gaza with the IDF uh, embedded with them, I'm pretty confident that Israel knows what it needs to do to protect its civilians, mm. its citizens. Yeah. What I wonder here tonight in Israel is, is that the case back home? 
as I look at the scenes in Ireland tonight, with riots in the streets after this uh, terrible stabbing earlier, does Ireland know how to defend itself? When I look at scenes like those in London, where we see disgusting young men and women praising a terror organisation, and, and even the people who, who, who praise a group that massacred young people at the kind of dance festival they themselves would mm. go to happily in a normal day, when I see that, I wonder, does Britain know what it needs to do to defend itself? I wonder. Yes. I'm not so worried about Israel at the moment. I think Israel can defend itself. I'm worried about Britain. Can well, wait, we? Well, wait until you see what we've got later on in the show, which is a series of, um, of, of footage, pieces of footage from various mosques up and down the country, where openly it is being said that we should go out and kill Jews indiscriminately, kill Zionists, Quoting from right. uh, the Quran, talking about, you know, let them come out behind the Jew and kill him. Unbelievable stuff being yes. said right out there in the open. They're not even yeah. pretending anymore. No. That's, by the way, that, that last quote is, is a hadith from Islamic scripture, and uh, it points to one of the sources of the problem. It's very, very deeply embedded, this anti-Semitism that we're seeing at the moment. Um, but no, I mean, the, the, the situation we have in Britain... Uh, I, I mean, Mike, what are we going to do about these people? Do we really want to live with Hamas supporters in no. the UK? We have them. There are people like Mohammed Sawalha who lives in North London yeah. in, a, in a flat he mysteriously managed to buy with a lot of cash the other year. Britain gave him uh, um, uh, the ability to remain in the UK. You're meant to sign a form when you become a British citizen say, saying you're a person of good character. We knew that he was a Hamas commander, Mohammed Sawalha, when he became a British citizen. How can a Hamas commander be a person of good standing? This is something that the British government needs to address. He should go. We should not want to be in the same country as him. No, you're absolutely right. And he even came in on a fake passport. Douglas, fantastic to talk to you.